Well, if you take the animal and you, you burn it, then the smoke rises and God is that which is above. And so God can detect the smoke and then he can detect the quality of the offering. So that's the idea behind the offering. And it's, it is archaic. It's not the way that modern people think about sacrifice, but I think about it psychologically as a developmental move towards full recognition of the idea. First of all, that work is a form of sacrifice and vice versa. And that because you sacrifice the present to the future at least, but you also sacrifice everything to your highest priority mm. if you're not confused. And then that brings up the question of what the highest priority should be and what the quality of the sacrifice should be. Mm. And the answer to that psychologically is it should be the highest possible quality sacrifice to the highest possible thing. Because you otherwise you have to ask yourself, well, why would you bother doing it? So it's easy to dismiss these ideas of burnt offering as primitive superstition, but there, there's an idea behind them that's it's unbelievably deep and profound. And, and also the idea that life requires sacrifice to continue in its utmost form and that it sh the sacrifice should be voluntary and that even it should extend in some sense and has to, to the sacrifice of the innocent. I mean, that's, a, that's an extremely profound and also very problematic idea. But it can't be just hand waved away. And there's a it's, there's a manner in which if you take that fractally and you apply it to little things or to purposes in general, there's a manner in which the purpose will always know the quality of your sacrifice right. because what you do, the quality of what you do will attain or not the purpose. Right. But like the world will hit you back. You can yeah. you can you can pretend with people, you can lie, you can you can deceive, but if you're trying to to, to, to be a good basketball player and I you mean, don't make you the, don't make the sacrifices, yeah. you're not gonna be a good basketball yeah. player. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what's gonna happen. Yeah, well and that's another indication of the intrinsic logos of the world. And yeah. and we also know this deeply, I would say, inside ourselves, because People know perfectly well that their conscience can torment them. And it is the case sometimes that people's conscience is overdeveloped and has this tyrannical superego element and will knock them down. But if your conscience is functioning well, basically what it does is indicate to you constantly that your sacrifices are either not of the right sort or they're not of the highest quality. Mm -hmm. And you call yourself out on that, right? And so, and you, and what's one of the things that's so odd about that is you can't, if you try to escape from that, it just makes it worse for you. And you know that, and you really can't escape from it, not except by abiding by it. You can fight it and all of that. And you can harden your heart and become even more determined in your willingness to make improper sacrifices. But you know perfectly well, I've never seen anyone that, in some fundamental sense, was deluded on that account. As people know, they know, I could, have, I could have tried harder. By the way, is it your th theory then, in light of all these days and that subject of sacrifice, do you feel that we are net losers, religiously, morally, theologically, net gainers, or neither, having no more sacrificial system? Well, I think we do still have a sacrificial system. I mean, I asked my cl my students all the time in my Maps of Meaning class, they were, a lot of them were children of first-generation immigrants, often Asian. I said, what did your parents sacrifice to come here? Well, it's like they knew exactly what that meant and they knew exactly, generally, what they had sacrificed as well. And so we've spiritualized it in some sense. And partly what you see in the entire biblical corpus is the spiritualization, Agreed the psychologization of a so, sacrificial but, practice. But very specifically, and I don't have an answer. I mean, but the fact I, that we don't act it out. The actual carnal representation of sacrifice, is that a loss that we don't have It's a have very that? good question. I mean, I part, of, part, of the, <laughs> part of the question that, that Jonathan and I have been debating back and forth constantly is, and part of the question that this book raises is, to what degree does what's become abstract still need to, still need to be represented in image and, and action, right? Right. How, how much does it has to have to be ritualized? Yeah. And but the there answer is, is still, we, we I don't mean, know. in Jewish tradition, there is still, even though it's not a killing of an animal, there still is a ritualized aspect of the sacrifice. Is there some kind of giving, like uh, giving money or well, giving something well, which whole, becomes well, like a... Ju Judaism, uh, the Torah and Judaism later, are, are very concrete religions. It, 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 it was even dismissed by some Christians in the Middle Ages as a carnal religion. 
because it's so deeply embedded in in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Practice. So in, yes, the, it, it, the abstract is is less important than the concrete in many ways in, in the Torah and and in Judaism. But uh, I'm asking this. I don't know if you know this. I'm sure Oz knows this. Uh, but uh, many many religious Jews still pray daily for the restoration of the sacrificial system, mm. that the temple be rebuilt, and specifically so that we can sacrifice again. And There's no denying the drama of blood and death. Right, so you you would not dismiss that prayer as, as well, odd. I, uh, well, I, I tend not to dismiss anything that's extraordinarily peculiar off out of hand, right? Because there's usually something lurking underneath it. But I mean, in Christianity, obviously, you still have a well, sacrificial... We believe we still have a sacrifice. Well, we participate yeah, a, in the sacrifice of Christ. Right, it's, right. Not a, yeah, it's, not, it's not a, a repeated yeah. sacrifice, yeah. though, no. isn't it? It's it, is a partici- it is a participation, a perfect memory in the participation of the, of the sacrifice of but Christ. It, it is an unusual period. AD 70 is when it disappeared, isn't it? Right. Destruction of the temple. And they shifted from the temple to the synagogue and from, if I understand it rightly, Dennis, from sacrifice to prayer. To prayer. Right. And I always wonder, how does prayer fill but, in for sacrifice? Well, hopefully when you pray, you sacrifice your so own for tyrant, atonement, right? Because what, right. what, that's it. Well, you well, sacrifice well, yeah, because a lot of time Partly what you're saying is, <laughs> is, I think if the prayer is proper, is you're saying, there's part of me that needs to go. There's part of me that needs, to, I need to let go. There's part of me that needs to die, and it has to be given up to something higher. What part of it is of me has to go? And that's, there's a contemplative aspect to that, and you look to the highest to help guide you in that. So there's a discriminating spirit within you that can help separate the chaff from the wheat, and the offering up of the chaff is the sacrificial gesture, and so that can be transformed into prayer. One of the things that Jung would say about that, for example, is that if you... If you give up enough psychologically, you don't have to. You, you'll you'll cut your losses in actuality, and of course that's sort of what thoughts for is right. So that you can you can get yourself straight. You can give it up in abstraction, so you don't act out the pathology, and then and then nothing dies in actuality. But that still means you have something to give up, and mm-hmm. part of that repentance idea is a sacrificial notion. It's like well. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a big part of me. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's going to hurt when that goes. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, but maybe you won't die. And then you offer it up as a sacrifice to something higher, because otherwise, why would you improve? Mm-hmm. And that discriminating spirit inside that judges what's in you that should be sacrificed, that even wouldn't even exist unless it was existing in relationship to something higher, because there'd be nothing to serve as a judge. Mm-hmm.